gosh. Striper. <laughs> I came to the right place. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Dan Herring and welcome back to my channel, Fish Den 365. I bet you can guess what today's show is going to be all about. Striper fishing, we're in the fall. This is a great time of the year as we're cooling down into the fall now for fishing stripers. So I know what you're thinking. Hey, aren't you the guy that did the striper videos fishing at night in the springtime? Yeah, that's me and those are great videos and I'll post them up here for you to look at them if you'd like. A lot of people have made uh, a lot of uh, great comments about them. But this is another great time of year to fish for striped bass and it's a different type of fishing than the, the spring night bite. In the spring, it's all about the bait fish, the shad and the alewives spawning. Well, that's long gone now, but we're in fall and shad and alewives are making migrations and moving and they tend to get corralled by the striped bass, which makes this a very exciting time to fish. As you know, I live in Pennsylvania and I would say that right now in this state, we're probably living in the golden age of striper fishing. It's just very good right now at a number of lakes. You've got the Lake Raystown, which is always good for striped bass. There's a strong population there. Wall and Paul Pack is red hot. Blue Marsh is good. Nakamixon's got a good population. Beltsville Dam has another good population. And not far over in New Jersey, we have Spruce Run and uh, Lake Hapakong, and both of those have hybrid stripers. So there's uh, a lot of opportunities in, in a uh, pretty small radius uh, to, to fish for these fish. And, and uh, it's really a good time to get out there and, and see what you can do and catch these fish. Hey folks, before we get too far into this video, I just wanted to explain this will be a fall fishing for stripers video using artificial lures. That's where my expertise is, that's what I prefer to fish. Not to say that, that live bait is not an effective way to fish for stripers. In many cases, it's the most effective way. But conversely, there are times when there's nothing better than an artificial lure for fishing stripers. And that's what this video is all about. Take a look. And there, there's been times you know, there's been times in the past where certain lakes got hot, like back in the early 90s, Nakamixon was red hot for hybrid stripers. But uh, right now, overall, I would say we're in one of the best periods of time to be living in Pennsylvania and, and uh, in the New Jersey area to be fishing for these fish. And at this time of year, like I said, they're, they're, they're corralling the bait fish. One of my greatest memories fishing for stripers took place at Beltsville quite a number of years ago. I was out on an early October day and fishing for fishing topwaters for smallmouth bass and the area that I was on in the lake late afternoon all of a sudden the surface just erupted. The striped bass pushed the alewives up and I'll never forget it. I'll never forget the carnage that was left by this feeding frenzy. The, the bait fish was literally flying out of the water, five feet out of the water. They were, they were trying to get away and escape so they were busting out but the stripers were busting into them and literally knocking them all over the place it was crazy i wish i had that on video i don't but boy it's still here in my mind i don't think no matter what happens to me as i get older i don't think i'll ever forget that day and uh, i quickly picked up a, a lucky craft pointer and started throwing it out there and caught some stripers and caught small mouths because the small mouth bass were in there with them feeding and corralling on these uh, on these alewives and bait fish a great time to get out and we're going to get into this discussion, um, all the lures to use, the equipment, how to handle situations, how to fish for them, the fishing line, all of it. We're going to start it and we're going to get into it right now. So here we are. It's, uh, it's uh, mid-September. Today's the 14th and the water is just starting to cool down. We're getting a few cool nights now and these fish are starting to change and they're starting to move. And, and this is a really good time to be on the water. One of the things that uh, I like about this time of year is that the fish tend to get pushed. You know, the alewives will get the tent, will be pushed up to the surface. And sometimes you'll have some great top water possibilities, which you guys know I love fishing top water. So uh, how do you find that? Well, you get out on the water either early morning or late in the afternoon and evening and you look around. You start to look for the bait fish. You might want to look at on points or secondary points or in the backs of pockets where bait fish can get pushed. It's a good idea to have a pair of binoculars with you because sometimes this could be hundreds of yards away and uh, sometimes you can hear it. Sometimes you might just see something frothing on the water surface and you, with those binoculars you can get a look at it. And if you see that the, you know, that the stripers are up and feeding, 
then you want to get over there. And the best way to do that is to turn on your gas motor and just ease your way over to it. And as you get closer, you want to start to, you know, slow down. Try not to run electronics too much. Try not to run your electric motor too much. You want to stay as silent as you can to sneak up on these fish because oftentimes when they're up in the surface like this, they can be a bit skittish. And sometimes not. Sometimes they're so honed in onto those alewives and shad that, that you can get right up on them. But you never know. So you just kind of move in there slowly and you start to figure out and fire some of your lures at these fish. And this time of year when that's going on, uh, I like top water, as I said. One of my favorite lures is the Lucky Craft Sammy. Here's two Sammies here. This is a Sammy 100, and this is the next size bigger. You can see it's a little bit bigger than the 100. And I base my lure selection entirely on the size of the bait fish, and that's entirely dependent on the system that you're in. For example, Lake Wall and Paw Pack, a lot of times the alewives are about this big, not much bigger. And so this is a, uh, a Norman top dollar. This is a great top water lure. I, but if you're down in Nakamixon, there's two forages there. You got alewives and you got gizzard shad, and they grow much bigger in Nakamixon. The water's more fertile. The lake is a few hours south of Wall and Paw Pack in comparison, so it's warmer. And as a result, you have uh, you have bigger shad, bigger forage, bigger alewives, and so I'll match that with bigger baits. I might go to something like a Zara Spook, or I might even need a larger red fin. So always first thing is is base the size of your baits uh, at this time of the year anyway on the size of the forage. That changes as you get closer to winter and that water's dropping down into the high 30s. But right now you want to match the hatch. You want to match the size of the bait. And uh, these two are great lures on, for top water. Always have a popper on hand. Um, this is a homemade popper but it works really good. Uh, and uh, so this is a great striper lure here. Pencil poppers are, are another good option. We've already mentioned the Zara Spook. That's another good bait to use for stripers. And then here's another one, the, uh, the Norman Top Dollar that I already mentioned. Now, if you have a favorite, I would say use your favorite. Use whatever you have confidence in. You know, there's a lot of others out there. The, the, uh, the Vixen that's made by Reaction Innovations is a great top water. Uh, the Sexy Dog made by Strike King, another great uh, top water. Use what you have confidence in. And uh, before you put it down, let's say you have some fish that are feeding and they're not going after your bait. The most important thing after you've decided to use a bait that is similar to the size of the bait fish is the cadence, is how you're working the bait. So all these lures that I showed you, except maybe for the popper, are walk the dog, dog type baits. And you might find that you need a really fast cadence where that thing is walking really quick and you're really working it fast. You might find you need a very slow cadence that just goes you know, at a very slow, steady pace, you might find you have to go one, two, three, stop, one, two, stop. You experiment with those things before you change your lures because you'll find that that cadence sometimes can mean everything. It can mean the difference between not getting a sniff and getting ferocious strikes. So uh, just something to think about as you're fishing and uh, you find a topwater striper bite the next time you're out there. So as the water is, you know, the water's still warm now, so you have this opportunity for top waters. And sometimes top water's not the deal. And so when that's the case, I'll use a jerk bait. It's one of the lures that I like to use. Here's a Lucky Craft uh, Pointer 100. This is a killer. I really like this bait. Another good one is the uh, Mega Bass Vision 110. Another very good lure. A little expensive. Here's one that is very much like the Vision 110. It catches fish just, just as well as far as I can tell. It's, a, it's an RC uh, stick bait. And uh, I think it's made by uh, Lucky Strike, I believe. Anyway, uh, I'll put some of these lures uh, in the description of the video so you can, and links to the, where you can get some of these baits. So generally what I do is I'll be fishing either early morning or, or late afternoon and evening. More often, more often than not, I'm fishing afternoon into the evening. It's just, uh, it fits my schedule better. And so sometimes I'll fish right uh, into to dark and stop at dark, or sometimes I'll fish a few af hours after dark, and, and oftentimes the fish are active at that at that point in the fall and so when I'm doing that and I'm throwing jerk baits as long as there's light as long as it's light outside I'm going to use a retrieve a jerk a standard jerk bait retrieve where you're actually you know walking the dog so to speak with the jerk bait you're, you're twitching this thing so you might go one two three stop or one two stop so you always want this bait uh, to be working erratically like something's wrong with it 
and the way you do that is you have some slack in your line each time you you hit that rod tip down you leave a little slack and then, then the bait will roll this way and it'll roll back and it, it's a very erratic retrieve but once it gets dark I change that and, and this is the lure I like to use for when it gets dark it's a bomber long A um, and, or a suspending one if you need to get a little deeper this is a suspend, suspending bomber long A the long A is also a good uh, standard jerkbait lure where you can uh, just use the standard jerkbait retrieve works good there too but I like the long A for once it gets dark and I'll just throw it out there and I'll change the retrieve dramatically what I'll do is I'll just retrieve it uh, just a slow steady retrieve and then the bait is just going to wobble back to me and the reason why I do that is once it's dark I want the fish to be able to hone in on the on the lure and just grab a hold of it and get it. I don't want to be using that erratic jerkbait retrieve because it's dark now. Maybe they won't see it as well and they might miss. And that's just how I think about it. But I do find that at night, once it's dark, retrieving these things slowly catches a lot of fish. It also catches walleye very well and it catches smallmouths too. But uh, it catches its share of stripers doing that. Another great bait, if you can get your hands on them, is the Cordell Blue Striper. Uh, this one you can actually fish both ways. This one's actually weighted. It, uh, it's internally weighted. Uh, somebody modified this for me. You can modify your own. There's instructions that you can get on the internet for doing that. I won't get into that in this video. Maybe I'll do another video on that another time. But uh, this has a very interesting action as you're uh, retrieving the bait. It actually looks like a glide bait, like a little glide bait in that it's rolling this way and then back this way and this way. It has that uh, action of a glide bait, but it's smaller in the size of a shad. And then this one's unweighted and you could put this one out, throw this one out there and if you retrieve it right away, you can get it up on the surface and it has that rolling action. And sometimes that could be a, a really good uh, bait to do. One, one of the things that I like about the blue striper is it's very heavy. You can throw it a country mile. So if you've got some shyer fish and you don't want to get too close to them with the boat, this could be a good option. Now that evening time and that early morning is also a good time to throw this, especially if they're up, if the fish are up a little bit. I like this as a wake bait. It's a Cordell Redfin. I like to retrieve this right along the surface. I use this at night also. Um, if the shad are, are uh, a little smaller, I'll use this size. If they're bigger, if we got uh, like a knock a mixin situation, sometimes I'll use this bigger size to match the, uh, the forage. Both the alewives and the gizzard shad get quite big at knock a mixin for example. Along with those, and, and maybe even more effective than the jerk baits that I've just described, are these type of baits. This is a swim bait with a jig head on it. It's a swing impact fat one of my favorites but I would say whatever you have confidence in when it comes to these soft plastic swim baits just use that just get it out there throw it out there and, and uh, retrieve it back one of the best ways to fish this thing is just throw it out let it go to the bottom and then just give it a slow steady retrieve on the way back uh, sometimes you might want to you know after several retrieves eight or nine retrieves of that reel handle you just stop it you just kill it and let it go down and then and then go right back again sometimes when you do that it'll trigger strikes the other thing is sometimes when you throw this bait out and you might be over 20, 15, 20 feet of water and as it's on its way down, it gets eaten. That's happened to me several times too. These are really good lures to use at Wall and Paw Pack. Here's one that matches the, the, uh, the size of the bait well at Paw Pack this time of year. It's a 3.8 inch Kitec. This one's a 4.8. This also catches them at Paw Pack. Works good at uh, Naka Mixin. Here's another one just with a jig. This with a swim jig. Gives it a little more action, what we call secondary action with the, with the, uh, uh, the skirt of the jig. Sometimes that could trigger more, more bites, gives it a larger profile, gives it a good shad profile. Uh, so I like to fish this uh, bait also in different sizes depending on the, uh, the size of the forage. As you can see these are all the same color, it's called bluegill flash, but to me this looks much more like a, a, a shad color or an alewife color and it's got, that, uh, it's got some of the uh, sparkle in there so it kind of looks like uh, gives the impression of uh, scales, that kind of thing. So I really like this bait as uh, uh, for fishing stripers. So all of these lures we just showed you, you know, and the presentations that we described are good right from now, right in through October, right into November. And, but then as the water starts to get colder, got some rain falling here, we might have to move this uh, to another location. But as you get into late November and, and into December and that water temperature starts falling, you start to find that vertical retrieves are become more important. Uh, jigging retrieves um, work a little bit better then compared to horizontal. You can still get them on those horizontal retrieves, especially on these swim baits, fishing them very slowly. 
but this time of year now when the water is getting into the 40s and going down into the high 30s is when I like to throw some spoons like this. This is a uh, Blade Runner Duh spoon. I like this color if the water's a little cloudy like at Nakamix and you got that chartreuse. Here's a good uh, color here and a very natural alewife looking color here. Um, these spoons are very good, very effective uh, striper baits. They work well for both hybrid stripers and purebreds. Several months ago we did a video about uh, blade baits and spoons. I'll put that up here as a link for you to see. Blade baits also work very good this time of year. This is a Bass Pro Shops laser blade, very good bait. This one's a Damiki Vault. I like this one quite a bit. And then you have a head and sonar, actually has rattles in it. Don't know if you can hear that, but uh, this could be dynamite also. So as you get into those colder water months, vertical presentations, trying to find concentrations of fish using your electronics, all that becomes more important because you can see these things on your electronics and just start dropping these baits down to them and start fishing more vertically. Sometimes you can still get them when they're active on these horizontal baits, so you have to keep them in your arsenal but it begins to switch more and more towards the vertical presentations to catch those fish. And sometimes I like to uh, put a small swim bait. This is, a, this is a real tiny one here. This is a Kitech Easy Shiner. Again, it's in that bluegill flash color. I'm not sure color makes a whole lot of difference in most days. It might on some days, but I would say again, use what you have confidence in. So here's a four inch one and here's a three inch one. And so you can see the difference in, in, in the, the size of these baits. But sometimes the, the bite will shut down on these blade baits and spoons. You'll be catching them on the spoon and the blade bait. And uh, all of a sudden it shuts off. Sometimes you can get a few more fish just by putting a small jig head on this, breaking out your spinning rod, and letting this go down and fishing this vertically. The same way you'd fish the, the uh, jigging spoon and the same way you'd fish the blade baits. It's just you're doing it with something a little more subtle, these. And uh, they'll catch fish for you also. So something to remember there. So uh, one of the things that I'll do with the topwater lures is I like to use braided line but then I'll use a monofilament leader and it'll be about my arm length, about a seven foot monofilament leader in front of that uh, line. I find that that works very well. The reason why I don't like braid right to the bait is two reasons. The braid can be seen pretty easily, but the second thing is because braid is so limp as these things are working, as you have a, a bait like this doing walk the dog, it can catch onto the line and foul the lure and mess up your retreat. Uh, mono is much more stiffer, so uh, maybe I'll use 20 pound braid to a 17 pound test mono and I'll never have that problem. And yet the braid allows you to, to because it's got no stretch, it allows you to make that retrieve much better for, uh, much easier for walking the dog. And I pretty much do the same thing for all these other lures. For the, you know, I'll use the same kind of setup. Maybe I'll go a little lighter on the on the uh, mono on the leader. Um, usually, the leader that I'll use for the sinking baits is fluorocarbon because it sinks, and I want it to sink. So I'll use maybe anywhere from eight pound test to fifteen pound test uh, fluorocarbon line. And I like Seaguar. I like the Seaguar line. Um, Invisex especially is very good for these applications. And so that's what I'll use. Um, sometimes I'll go as high as 15 pound test on these vertical um, applications. Sometimes I'll go down to 8 pound test when I'm fishing a more subtle bait like this little guy. It's, it's based on the, uh, on, on the type of presentation, how finesse it is versus uh, how aggressive the presentation is. Hope that helps with uh, that. And then the rods that I like to use for all these topwater lures, I like to use a, a specific topwater rod. I use a Daiwa Light and Tough topwater twitching rod. It's an old rod, it's been around for a long time. I got three of them and they're perfect for topwaters. I love them for that purpose. They're six and a half feet long. I'm not very tall, so that allows me to stand up straight and, uh, and I can pop the, I can walk the dog by working the rod tip down towards the water and I'm not slapping the water. If I had a seven foot rod, it'd be much closer to doing that. If you're taller, you might want a seven foot rod to do that, but you want to pick a rod that has a good flexibility in the tip, but then a decent backbone um, right up to the tip. Something that will allow you to work these baits. Also works great on the jerk baits. So I use the same rod, the twitching rod for that. And then on some of these heavier jigs, sometimes I'll use a heavier action rod, a medium heavy rod rather than a medium rod, for example. The same twitching rod works quite well 
for, uh, for the blade baits too. So oftentimes I'm using these for blades and spoons as well. One thing, if you're a bass fisherman, which I am, I use my bass fishing equipment to catch these stripers, my bass rods, my bass reels. Uh, some of those applications, you might have the drag tight, uh, set uh, very tight. You, in some cases, you know, when I'm fishing a lure like this for bass, I'm taking the drag all the way to the to uh, the highest setting so that the fish can't move the line at all because I'm using heavy line, 17, 20 pound test. Uh, you know, there's not a bass that can break that if I tie my knots well. But that's a different case with the stripers. When you get a 20 pound striper on, he'll do he'll break that line uh, or break something else or bend your hooks. So remember in that case when you're fishing for these stripers to adjust your drag accordingly. You're going to have to let this fish um, move with some line uh, in order to land them without having a bent out hook or a broken uh, line, uh, something like that. So adjust your, your uh, reels accordingly, use the right uh, equipment, use some rods that, uh, that can handle those fish and you'll have a great time. So we're in the fall now, it's time to get out there and start looking for these fish. Use your binoculars, you know, use your, your senses to the best of your ability. The fish are there, they're out there and they're looking for food and early morning and late afternoon and evening is a really good time to, to focus on striper fishing. So get out there, get out to the, some of the lakes that we've mentioned and, and give these things a try, look around, see what you can do. And as the year progresses, as we get colder and colder, think more vertically. And, and uh, the most important thing is just get out there and, and have fun and catch these fish. They're big fish, they fight hard. Well, we covered a lot of stuff in a short period of time when it comes to fishing for these fall stripers but I'm pretty sure that some of the information I share with you can be useful to you, and I hope that it is. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell, that notification, that'll tell you when the next video is coming out. Most important thing is to get out there now. We're in the fall, there's gonna be less pleasure boaters out there, less people in general. You'll have more of the water to yourself. That's what you need. You need some more quieter days for these stripers to come up and get active. And when they do, it can be a blast. Hope to see you on the water. And as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.